Yes, greetings, uh, colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, Commerza Radio Worldwide. We are back with our Tuesday series, and we are focusing on the Business Academy show. And the topic this evening is very close to my heart, and it's about business succession planning. Uh, we're really looking forward to this conversation. As always, our show is based on the model or the principle called the idea. We inform and entertain, develop and educate, empower and support, associate and network. That's the idea. Uh, I have with me in the studio Eric Shipalan. Eric and I, we know each other for a number of years in the space of uh, human capital, human resources. We were together at IPM, and we have since been together until today. Eric, uh, let me welcome you and greet you. How are you doing? Thank you, Sam. I'm, I'm doing quite well. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. I know you are, you are passionate about this topic, not because you research it, but because it's a topic that you uh, dealt with in your days in corporate. Am I right? That, that, that's correct, uh, Sam. Um, that's a topic that I'm very, very passionate about. Uh, it's a topic that I have dealt with for over a number of years, I would say about 25 years in, mm. in different you know, uh, companies, you know, different size of companies in, uh, and so on, yeah. And uh, I am going to talk from the heart and uh, not from, from research. Oh, beautiful. Even better. <laughs> Perhaps let's start by just uh, 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 telling the listeners in a little bit more detail, who is Eric? Uh, who, I mean, I know you from Limpopo, Eric, uh, but we all became Houtengas. <laughs> <laughs> all people from Limpopo have moved to, you know, to Hauteng. Yes, um, my, my name is Eric Shipalano. I am a retired, you know, HR director. I've been an HR director for over 30, over 30 years. I think my first appointment as an HR director was in 1993, you know, uh, before we had our, our, our democracy. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that period as an HR director, one of my key functions was to ensure that there is leadership continuity and building talent from within which mm. is commonly called succession, you know, uh, planning. Yeah. And I have learned, you know, the uh, pros and cons, you know, of um, uh, different, you know, uh, uh, strategies and different methodologies of implementing, you know, succession planning, which I am going to share with the listeners, you know, during the course of the, the talk. Mm. I know that uh, when we talk up with, I mean, this particular topic we titled business, uh, succession planning, but at the end of the day, it's all about talent, be either at the leadership level or management level or at the employee level. Yes, um, they, they actually go hand in hand. I mean, if, if, if you have a, a good strategic you know, a plan or, or business plan and you don't ensure a leadership continuity, it's as much as not having you know, a plan. So the, the, that's why the two goes hand in hand. You ought to have, you know, a leadership, a, a, a strategic plan of your business going ahead. And then to say in, in that process, who is going to be manning, you know, uh, the different functions of, of, of the business? Mm, mm, mm. Indeed, indeed. I see, uh, Dolores, are you wanting to, to join the, the, the conversation? Welcome. Yes, I just, I was, I've been struggling for some reason. Yes, I'd like to join in. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, we just, uh, Dolores. I'm looking forward. Hi. Hi, is it Eric? Yeah. Hi, Eric. Yeah, yeah. We we had just started and uh, perhaps just say hi to the listeners. Uh, they know you, many of them know you very well, but say, say hi to them. Hi everyone. Why do I feel like I'm, I'm behind Jack now? Hello everyone. <laughs> um, I am looking forward. Um, and yes, I'm, I'm sure you've been all welcome. But it's good to be here. Yes, back. beautiful, beautiful. 
Yes, uh, uh, Eric. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, is this the topic that is common in every company, or is 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 the privileged few that know about it, that are committed to it, that find themselves having to deal with it? How did you go about? How did you go about the becoming specialists or fascinated by it in all organizations? Uh, Sam, it started when I, I was working for a multinational. And uh, multinationals are, are really big, you know, on, on, on succession planning. They actually even have a, 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 a vice, what they call a vice president, you know, a success, succession planning. And uh, uh, they implemented this, you know, across across the globe. So that's, that's how I got, you know, uh, interested in it. And uh, it, it also helped me uh, in terms of uh, developing, you know, uh, the stuff in, in, in locally uh, because I, I, I knew I had a, um, what I would call a template which to mm. follow, you know, and, 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 and so on. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and as we, we started, you know, simply stated, succession planning is a process of developing talent to meet the needs of the organization now and in the future. So you, 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 you got to look at that and say, look, you know, I've got a, I've got a, 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 a business plan. My business plan spans over, you know, uh, 10 years. Over mm-hmm. 10 years, there are certain things that are going to be changing in the, in, in the business. Mm-hmm. And in, in, that, in that process, who am I going to be deploying in the various, you know, uh, uh, functions, you know, to, you know, to do that business? Sometimes it is easier to go outside and, 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 and poach and hire from outside. Sometimes, as we discussed, you know, previously, it is not possible because your organization is unique. It has got a, a unique offering and mm-hmm. you have to, 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 to groom the people, you know, from, from within over a number of years. Mm. Mm. No, uh, but we then also talk about replacement planning. Yes. We, we, what is the difference? Yeah, we speak. Replacement planning is about finding backups to fill vacancies on an organization chart. While succession planning is about grooming the talent needed for the future. As I said, the, the, the two are related, but they've got different activities. Mm. If, I want a replacement of an HR director, for example. I'll tell my uh, HR recruitment or my, my recruitment people, I said, I'm looking for a person with this particular qualifications, with this particular, and then they will go in, in, in the market and, 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 and try and find one. But if, if I'm looking for um, an, an IT developer, for example, who is going to be developing Something that I am going to be offering in 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 which is unique to my organization in in ten years time, you know I, I need somebody that I would have groomed from inside who understand the business who understand who have been acculturated to 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 to, to my business. Hmm. Wow, Dolores, you must have uh, worked with a number of clients around this topic. Is this how you understood it, and is how you? You 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 will describe it. Um, yes, I mean I I would um I mean I can only speak from my experience in working in organizations right now, um and I yes I would agree with uh, with Eric in the sense that um in a succession planning, firstly it is true that multinationals are very big on, on, f- having a focus on, succession as a discussion, as a conversation, and as an ongoing process that is measured. So for instance, when, when the HR director goes to the board through the CEO, of course, there will be a succession template that's been discussed. Mm-hmm. So you, usually what, they, what the organizations would do is they would, they would target what they call key strategic roles. So for mm-hmm. instance, the CEO is a key strategic role and probably the people that report to the CEO and probably more the CFO uh, and the COO because those really are, 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 are the demand. You find that when you look at the market, the demand is not necessarily readily available. Mm. Uh, 
and, and usually once they target those roles, those are the roles that uh, there usually is a, a number two put in place as on the template for succession. And a discussion has been looked at in terms of is the person internally or is the person externally? If the person is not there um, internally, um, although the organization would really, really, as a first course, would like to, you know, uh, use the people internally for succession because that also is part of development, is part of, uh, you know, grooming people in the organization. It creates motivation. It creates a sense of the organization values us. If, mm. if, if the staff sees that the people that are being put in the succession are the individuals that we know that we've worked with that are in the organization. Uh, mm. But, I, you know, sometimes it's actually not possible to get, to get that person that's ready immediately. Uh, mm. If there's a, if there's a gap and then mm. the organization look outside. So, so yes, it is, it is, um, um, it is something that, you know, if, if organization, good organizations have got a handle on the discussions. And I find that, um, you know, the, the, the HR director is the one who facilitates these discussions and make sure that these discussions are on the agenda. These discussions happen, uh, facilitate, coordinate it, because if the HR doesn't do it, it, it it's that agenda that is like they're there at the back end that it never gets done. And then you mm. find organizations that... Um, when they get into a, pro, a, a position where the CEO has just resigned or the CFO has just resigned, they sit for six months mm. going, going through the recruit process. Yeah, and, and that's very costly, Eric. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, Dolores, I just want to interject there when you said, you know, HR is there to provide, you know, the expertise, at, or, mm. you know, the templates on how to do it. But uh, in, in organizations that I've worked for and where it has been very successful, the CEO has been the driver of, you know, uh, the process, you know, has been the owner. And he, he got measured by the board uh, 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 about, you know, the, 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 the process. And, and Sam, I, I fear that we have just jumped into, into the topic. Mm. Is that we discuss the fact you know, how, how do you start? How do you start the process? Yeah. Uh, shouldn't we be, 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 be covering that, you know? Um, uh, yes. I, I, I just wanted to lay the context. But once the company has decided that they are going to be committing to, to this, give me the framework. Uh, how do you go about it? Is, it, is this... Uh, as simple as that, or is this something that really needs uh, serious thought? Okay. And, and, and as I, I indicated to you offline, uh, mm. this is a very, very serious, you know, uh, topic, which mm. no, normally threatens, you know, the positions of, you know, many, you know, uh, top people. So mm. it, you, you normally find that in, in, in most organizations, it gets introduced by the board. They, they normally the board says, we want to see a succession plan. And uh, then it goes, you know, to the executive, you know, team to discuss, you know, uh, how do we implement, you know, uh, the succession plan. Then as, as Dolores said, you know, the HR will then, you know, uh, provide the expertise, the templates and, you know, and, and, and so on. It, mm -hmm. it's, 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 a, it's a change process. Yes. Uh, so just hold it there and and that they should let me just welcome Ready to go and then you can continue. Uh, Ready to go, welcome. Thank you, sir. Sorry for struggling to come in, but I'm in now. We are happy to have you here. I'm with Eric and Dolores here uh, uh in the studio. Hello uh, okay. welcome, Ray. Hello, hello Eric. Oh. Hi Ray. Hello, Mama. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna log off now because they zoom in, in because you were not here. Oh sorry, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't, yeah. Don't, don't log off. Uh, you can stay in, Dolores. You, you you are enriching the discussion, Dolores. No, no, I'm staying. I'm staying. I was kidding. I was just kidding. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. So normally then once you know um a discussion has been held to say we need to implement succession plan. 
it, it, as, as I said, it's this is one of those serious topics that has to be taken seriously, you know, together with change management, because it has got the potential to threaten, you know, uh, the uh, safety or the positions of the people, you know, uh, on, on top. So first, you you need to go in and and and, and talk to the entire staff. What I normally used to do, I'll start with my executive team discuss what is succession planning what is the difference between succession planning and replacement and replacement planning and how does it how, how does it, how does how does it work in in succession planning we we normally have uh what we call readiness levels you know mm. a, a ready now that is a person that you can plug in and put in in in, in a position or you've got one to two years three to two to four years four to five years six to seven years and you know and so on and then you 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 talk to your team about that and you talk to your team about a methodology of identifying what we call high potential you know uh, candidates and uh, different companies have got different you know instruments you know to 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 identify high potential candidates and the most common one is is a nine box grade mm. and 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 then what's that has been sold to 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 a senior you know uh, team you then go to 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 the employees as a change management process to indicate that we are going to be implementing you know a uh, 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 session planning this is how it is going to work not everybody is going to be on the succession plan and mm. explain the reasons why and the fact that you are not on the succession plan does not mean that you are useless Mm. And, and and then you you have to also be, be saying there are some people that are what we call key employees, but they are not succession succession material and give mm. give diff, 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 different reasons, and then also indicate to you know potential you know success succession candidates that not everybody who is on the succession plan. Is going to be, you know, uh, 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 progressing, you know, to, to to occupy the position. There are certain processes that are taken. There are some companies who who, who actually says, look, we've got a recruitment, you know, a procedure which says we interview everybody, you know, uh, when whenever a position say that is going to happen. We are you are not going to automatically get into into that position, so that everybody understand this, you know, animal called succession planning, and then also indicate that those in individuals that have been identified as high potential candidates are going to undergo what we call accelerated development, you know, plan. As every employee in the organization is expected to have an uh, what we call an ID or ED in different companies, employee development plan or individual development plan, depending on, 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 on the terminology that that company uses. But you say we are going to single out those people that have been identified as high posts to give them accelerated, you know, a development in order to get them faster and ready to, you know, to those positions. So once that is agreed um, and and discussed and the, the 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 pros and the cons, you know, uh, the, then you can then start with the with the with the with the, with the templates. So so it's a specialist field, uh, so to say, within HR. Uh, uh, from based on what you are explaining, that it's, it's a highly specialized uh, competence that you must have to drive the process of this part. Sort of, it is it, sort of. Uh, um, you, you 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 then go to go and re, you know do research, you know on on and do um, a, 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 a comparison on 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 what other companies have done. Take for mm -hmm. example the 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 the. Uh, the best, the best, it's called best employer. Mm -hmm. uh, it, yes. They provide a lot of templates, you know, on on on, on succession planning. Mm -hmm. uh, Relitoko, let's give you the opportunity to just say a few intro directory remarks and greet the listeners, but also just give us your views on this very important topic. I know you love, you like it. Yeah, thank you, Sammy, and thank you, Dolores and Eric. I'm happy to be part of this discussion. 
you know, in the 80s, industrial relations in South Africa was top in terms of human resource management. And top management also bought into the whole process to make sure that there's never peace at the, at the workplace. But when you come to succession management, it does appear that uh, the concept is not generally accepted. Mm. Replacement planning is, 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 is the norm. As long as we can find people that we need and are available either internally or externally to bring them into the organization, that, that seems generally to be the norm. Mm. I think it's only high, highly developed organizations that take this subject seriously. Mm. And, and no. when you look at, um, and I think as HR professionals, I think we are guilty as well. Mm. Look at the state-owned enterprises. How HR seem not to have an impact. Mm. Look at the municipalities our HR seems not to have an impact. Mm -hmm. If the processes that you're talking about, like succession planning, succession mm -hmm. management, were taken seriously, we would be talking a different language mm -hmm. in terms of people knowing what they are employed for, what their targets are, and what they need to deliver. In my sense, I think succession planning is not a common theme as mm -hmm. far as HR management concern at the moment. Mm. I don't know what Eric can. And what is the impact of that, really, to go when it comes to let's let's get out of HR and just talk about a business enterprise, an enterprise that needs to be handed over to the next generation or somebody else because maybe you, as the owner manager, the time has come. So they also call replacement route. That is my sense, to be honest with you, Semi. If, if there was robust succession management processes in place, we wouldn't be having the chaos that we're having with the state owned enterprises, to be honest with you. Mm. The, the environment would have been made to be conducive to the processes that will sustain the organization into the future. Mm. That will make sure that the, pro, the organization is handed over to the next generation in a healthy state. Mm. You can't say that now. Mm. Dolores and Eric, what kind of struggles you have seen yourself having to pull, to fight or, or engage in just to get succession planning to be understood the way it's supposed to be? Yeah, uh, let, let, let me uh, probably start, uh, Dolores, if you don't mind. Mm. Uh, in, 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 my, in my experience, it has not, it has not always been easy. Um, the maturity level of the organization, you know, will determine the ease with which you implement, you know, um, succession planning. I, I gave an example to Sam, you know, um, in, in our offline discussion that I joined a JC listed company with seven different, you know, uh, uh, um, what I'll call operating, you know, units. And uh, the board is the one that introduced succession planning and said, you know, why are we not having succession planning here? And I raised my hand at the time because I was part of the board and I said, okay, give me the, give me the task. I'll, 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 I'll champion the task. And, and, and I had to go and start with the very first person, you know, in that organization to say, you know, um, this is how we do succession planning. And I want to discuss your succession plan, Mr. CEO. And the CEO looked at me with a sort of a, a pale face and said, I am not going anywhere. And then I said, you, <laughs> yes, I understand you are not going anywhere, but what about if you get knocked by the bus? And he looked at me and says, Eric, why do you hate me so much? Why should the bus knock me down? Why shouldn't the bus knock you? <laughs> and uh, I, I tell you, it, for the next three months, I was, meet, I was making sure that every meeting I have with him has succession planning on the agenda until I was helped by a banning platform 
which has in most in most cases the Benin platform helps to you know to 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 to, to get the system going. This chap was sitting in the canteen and having lunch, and he had a, a, a minor heart attack, and he was booked off for six weeks to recuperate, and there wasn't any any two IC. In, in, in that organization with, with seven different u, uh, units, you know, he had di divisional CEOs that were, were, were reporting to him. When he recuperated and come back, and I told Sam how easy it was because I had that banning platform. And another banning platform that, that, that I, 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 I found to help is if you try to replace, for example, a, a, um, a, 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 a chief financial officer, and you spend about say six to a year not finding anybody. You find people who are qualified, but you don't find people who are fit for your organization. That is a banning platform that tells the company, yes, we should have developed somebody from within over a long time. So th th that's that's how I, I found you know uh, these things helped me in in, in sailing out a succession plan. And as I said right at the beginning, uh, it's 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 a it's a very serious topic because it threatens the the security of the people you know uh, uh, that are in certain positions. Uh, mm. Dolores, mm. uh, quote from you. Mm. Um, you know when Ray started uh, laying. The introductory mark. Uh, he spoke about. He took the history of the succession planning from the eighties to now, mm. and it's amazing how the consistency of how succession planning is being looked at mm. has actually remained consistent. And 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 for me, the the my experience that I've that I've realized is that, you know, we we. We introduce succession planning as a program that is outside of the bigger context of the organization culture. Yeah. So succession comes in as so we have this. So 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 you find that as an example, this organization has got great values as they're running this culture and 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 somehow, you know, we don't connect succession as part of what we do in this organization. So when it comes as a project in an organization, people are becoming skeptical. I think Eric, you are the one that said that it's a change pro it's a change management process, actually. Mm. And like all change management projects, you start from the beginning. You build a business case, you build, you you mobilize people into understanding the business case. And if the environment and the culture is supportive of the trust that exists, then nobody's going to look at this program skeptical and think, okay, now they want to put, to promote their own people now, kind of thing, you know? But this whole idea that it is disjointed from the whole system of what the organize, what the enterprise mm -hmm. is about. Mm -hmm. But we all agree we all agree so uh, we all agree that uh, the intention and the, the the intent for it is still relevant even today and yet we haven't really perfected it can we hmm? can i just follow up on what the brothers have said yes i think we as hr we need to start becoming aggressive like finance hmm. Nobody is questioning the balance sheet. Nobody is questioning the uh, income statement. Nobody is questioning the cash flow. That is the finance architecture. And that's how it is run. So with us, we haven't laid out our whole HR architecture to say these are the things that will make this organization succeed and still go forward in the future regardless of the changes that are coming, even those that we don't know or those that we don't anticipate. If we follow all these processes, including, and that this includes succession plan, it's on the plate from the beginning. It's not something that is going to be introduced halfway when the play is on already. Mm -hmm. The challenge now is that it is being introduced as something else that comes 
people don't know where it comes from. Yes. So it's, just, it's, 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 it's like a fact. It's not built into the model of talent management of, of the organization. It must be a whole tapestry of HR. Everyone must see it. That's how we operate. That's how we function. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that's why I said once it has been agreed, you know, uh, by the board, the executive, there need to be a change management process, you know, uh, uh, implemented on how you are going to, 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 to go about so that everybody understands. There, there's a saying that you cannot play chess with people who don't understand the, the rules of chess because they will think they've won it there, even if they're, they're, they're having won. So mm. you need to make everybody, you know, understand, you know, uh, uh, how, what sort of rules are going to be used, you know, to drive, you know, a succession plan. Mm. Mm. And secondly, uh, even though a uh, rare, you are saying HR, HR, HR. I still believe that each and every, say, for example, the, the, the organization that I'm talking about, we made sure that the divisional CEO, one of their objectives, and it was not a lesser objective, was succession plan. That's quite true. HR is just facilitating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But mm. that, that one is quite true, mm. and, but 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 the the whole process must be centered in senior top management. Top management must drive it, but mm. they must know that we are facilitators because we have, we understand the change processes. We we help them implement implement it in their own divisions. Mm. Let, let, this is this is fascinating. What about the people that are on the succession plan themselves? And how do you manage those expectations and the disappointments when they don't ultimately become uh, what they were intended to become? And I, I think, uh, and what are the reasons why people don't end up actually um, on the other side of the whole succession plan? Yeah, as, as I said, you know, uh, right at the beginning, you discuss the rules of the game you know, so that they understand, you know, uh, what are the rules of the game and the fact that, you know, for, for them to be on the succession plan does not mean that they are ready now. There may be certain, certain developments that needs to take place and they have to, 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 to undertake those developments in order to get them ready, you know, uh, 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 for, for, for the position. And even when they are there, they have made themselves ready there, there are some companies who are saying, look, we are going to follow our recruitment you know, uh, uh, process. Otherwise, we, we are uh, claimed to, to be practicing unfair labor practice. We are going to advertise the position. But because you have done X, Y, Z, you, 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 you stand a better chance of, 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 of getting there. So we are not going to automatically just give you the position. So that's something that needs to be understood I mean, to be understood up front as the rules of, you know, of the game. And then again, succession planning has got a lot of, you know, uh, what I'll call broken, you know, uh, pipelines, you know, along the way. And uh, you might find that, uh, and this doesn't happen in, 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 in multinationals because they keep on moving people around, you know, all over the world. Uh, some, some requirement is that people must have, experience is more than one geography, so they move them. So you might find that in local companies that are locally, people don't move. And then you then have what we call the clogged you know, pipelines. And then there's those pipelines are clogged, they end up leaking, which means you end up losing those people that you know you were you were you were you were, you were preparing as, as succession candidates. And I've seen one company adopt the attitude of saying, yes, they, they, they may leave, but we are going to follow them where they are going. We are going to keep tabs with them so mm. that whenever a position is ready, we are going to recruit them back to us. Mm. Mm. That's a strategic int intention that they take. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah the, the, uh, I mean, I, I agree wholeheartedly with Eric in terms of the, the, the process. Um, and I, you know, I also like to, to take a step back, you know, when, when I was cut, I was trying to 
you know, to position um, succession planning in the midst of a broader strategy of the organization, which as the organization push for other strategy, they need to also continue to push for succession planning so that it becomes part and parcel. Mm. And, and, and succession planning is not for everybody. Not everybody's going to be on the succession template, you know? Mm. And that is why, you know, in my experience, what we really would look at, before we look at the person, we look at the role. Mm. Which role are we wanting to really put that succession effort on? Mm. And and once we've looked at the role, is then that we then can say, okay, where's the body for this role? Mm. Instead of doing it the other way around, because when we do the other way around to say, okay, we the the we're looking for um, the CFO is going to be the or just the people in the CFO team, for instance, which is a very wrong way to look at it. Because the, the way the, 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 the way to look at it when you really build this business case is to say the CFO, when I'm using him as an example, the CFO is a key critical role that the organization cannot live without. So if we're going to put a succession planning for the person then that can be in the CFO position should something happen to the CFO, where do we look? And what do we look for in where we're looking? Mm. Um, so that's the that's the key that's the key then and because succession is not for everybody um in 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 the last organization i went to which was a technology organization you know we 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 bought a cloud based software that really drove what we called a data driven talent management which basically is saying it it everybody had access to the system to be able to work like a LinkedIn, the new system that we put in, it worked like a LinkedIn. You put in all of your qualifications, your experiences, projects you worked for, and each MD has got access to that across the organization, not just your person. So that if you are looking as an, as a, as an MD, you wanting to now put together a plan. You're sitting with your ex, or you're looking at a plan to say, okay, we've got a we have a scrum. We only have got one person who's got the scrum master qualities. Who else in the organization? You literally can go on the data and just click and say, ask for who, who has done scrum master. It will give you all the people in the organization who have done that. And that's how using very key information and data to be able to help managers to plan succession. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, so so that's that's a that's a very interesting insight to say don't make it a standalone program, make it part of the broader strategy of the organization. Mm -hmm. right. I think right. that's a message you are getting. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. and, and the other message is that because it's not for everybody, um, you know, be clear in the in the succession planning strategy that it's not for everybody. Here are the key roles that have been identified for mm -hmm. succession planning. However, for everybody in the organization, there is a data-driven talent management. Mm -hmm. Everybody has access to and everybody participates in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and then I had, I had Eric saying that the, the 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 multinationals that are located in various places in the, all over the world use that very well uh, by looking for development opportunities for uh, people on a succession plan and make people, uh, I mean, transfer people there uh, so that they can actually experience this accelerated growth. Now, what do we do for small organizations who don't have um, so much options uh, uh, for, for development? Yeah, so the, no, the, I think the, the context dictates, uh, Sammy. Mm. They don't, if, if it's a small organization, it does not need that necessarily need that international exposure. Yeah. You need to understand the context under which they operate. What are the factors that will impact the organization and mm. how can they mitigate those? Mm. Mm. And they are preparing people to, to deal with situations that will arise. 
So you are basically supporting the coin trades by dollars that is actually informed by the strategy because then the strategy will also take the context into consideration. Exactly. Yeah. And, and then and then again, it, it will depend on the movement of the people in the organization. If you have got very little movement, it is also pointless to drive an aggressive, you know, uh, succession plan strategy. When you know that people are not moving, you know, it, it, it's pipelines to nowhere. Uh, as, uh, that's, that's why how we call it in, in, in succession plan technology. Mm. You know, you are developing people to nowhere. So you got to take it, you got to take it easier. But if you have got a lot of movement in, in, mm. in, in the organization, more especially in the, in, the, in the top hierarchy, then you need to drive your, your, your succession strategy, you know, uh, robustly and, and, and do what we call accelerated development in much more in a, in a, in a, in a structured way. But do we have a choice? A business is a going concern, isn't it? Somewhere, somehow, later, uh, new leaders have to come in because others have to move on, or pro natural process also happen. Is it is it something that we can say, ah, oh, we don't have too many opportunities, so we're not going to really drive it? Do we have a choice, or is it a risk that we just ignore until the the lightning hits? But I think still we can use the talent management strategy to prepare those that can take over. Not necessarily succession. Yeah. If, if there's no movement, it's not necessarily. Uh, so that is, is, is it where now it becomes a replacement planning? No. It not really. It will be succession planning, same. But what I'm, I'm trying to allude to is that don't drive it aggressively. I see. Don't, don't mm. drive it aggressively. In, 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 a, in, a, in a big organization where people are moving around, you, 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 you can drive it aggressively to, to ensure that, you know, in each and every position has either got a one to two years or a ready now, you know, a, 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 a succession candidate. But in an organization where there's no movement, mm. you can do with people with three to four years, five to, to six years. And you know that if that happens, maybe you are going to employ somebody on contract whilst they are grooming this particular individual to fill the remaining gaps that they still have. Mm. 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 I want you, I know I'm looking at time. Can you touch on uh, the, the entrepreneurs? Can we bring this discussion or this thinking to entrepreneurs who uh, start operations, they are manager operators, but you know, somewhere down the line, they're gonna have to head over to either the children or, mm. or whoever they will have identified. Is there a mild way of doing it, or is it the same philosophy? For me, if it is family oriented, mm. mentorships plays a big role in mentorship, mentorship and coaching because I'm with them every day. Mm. Mm. Have lunch together. We have dinner together. We discuss things even in a family setting. Yes, mentorship and coaching will, will go wow. a long way in helping succession. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, yeah, it it reminds me of when you were asking the question. Um, Sam, it reminded me of family businesses. Yeah, and how tricky family businesses can be. Mm. Uh, if the mentorship and the coaching works, it works well and it becomes a very successful business. Mm. If the siblings are in some form of whatever it is that siblings gets up to, it can be a disaster. Mm. Um, so so there, there are case studies about family businesses and how the batons are handed over one to the other. Mm. And the succession of somebody who is not even a member of the family and the role that they play mm. once they come into the family. So it is it is a very interesting space, what you're talking about. And it, it's, it's the same as uh, entrepreneurship, like you, 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 you talk. I mean, uh, uh, Sam, just to use an example of yourself, I mean, you're building this beautiful empire and um, who are you grooming to take yeah. over? No, I, I, I'm being yeah. made to think quite deeply here. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a very interesting model in the East uh, where there's, they, they normally take their children and send them to go and work for their friends somewhere in another land. Mm. 
He said they come back when they, 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 they are very much groomed. And, and that's part of the mentorship we was talking about. Yeah. But it's also it's a quasi, because you know who's going to replace you already, isn't it, Eric? Yeah. Um, the, 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 the difficulty with, 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 with family business is uh, the fact that it has to be somebody, you know, who is closer, who is closer to the business. And sometimes they may not be amenable, you know, to the kind of development that you want them to take before they take the betting. Mm. Wow. Terrera, it sounds like it is a topic on its own. It it certainly is. Um, I don't know if 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 those that are that are privileged enough to have netflix there's a there's a there's an episode in there called succession oh yes and and it plays all the dynamics of a family business that 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 really will touch to all of the issues we're talking about now mm. so 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 you know if people are interested they can go and work and, and watch it in there but it is it is just the dynamic of succession within the family business where none of the siblings the 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 the, the, the father felt worthy that they are ready and they understand the business and the father chose a somebody outside of the family that that he trusted mm. uh, but that person has got to work with the family it is a, yeah it is wow <laughs> yeah we, we can also use the ackermans you know a uh, case study for example okay. yeah. yeah yeah to bring it home mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Pick and Pay has been in the in the news um, just some months ago. They've got this new CEO who used to work there, now left, and now came back again. So mm. and there was that whole outcry in the newspaper about, you know, did they not have succession planning? Why, why, why did they have to go and, and pull somebody overseas to come? Don't they have anybody that can actually run? Yeah, yeah. but remember Dolores uh, Ackerman's son, I think he's called Jonathan? you know, uh, took over and uh, it, it, it didn't go well. Mm. So that's when they have to go to go back to this chap that had actually left and gone overseas to do. Yeah. To... Wow. I'm going to find, I'm going to find the opportunity to talk about this. I'm thinking of other, other family businesses as well. And the Fanta family and all. Mm. And, and it will be nice to talk about the local examples, but, I'm looking at time and I'm denying you the opportunity to actually say goodbyes because we're going to be cut just now. One, one second each. <laughs> I don't know what it's doable. Losing remarks and just say goodbye to the listeners. No, the discussion has just demonstrated that succession is, is critical yeah. for the continuity of the organization. Mm. We, with IT, we are doomed. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. Eric? I, I think you know a succession plan is is essential for each and every organization. I mean, whether big or small, people need to see uh, uh, how they can implement it in their own way. Mm. Wow! Yeah. Mm. That is a big thank you to you for joining the studio, and please, in your last week. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just I. I...